All right, welcome to Citizens Climate University. It's a weekly webinar program of Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides ECL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'm your host, Brett Cease, and tonight's topic is going to focus on introductory training to healthy forests. In this training, we're going to cover one of CCL's policy agenda items, healthy forests, and provide an overview to explain why this is an important policy area for addressing climate change, as well as what types of policies CCL supports within this arena. Our three learning goals throughout tonight's training will be helping you as a listener understand why healthy forests are an important climate solution, explore benefits to healthy forests and their policies, as well as, as, well as why it's included in our policy agenda, and to think through what kind of reforms or specific policies CCL supports and how we as an organization and a group of volunteers will engage in this process. And our agenda is straightforward. First, we're going to explore why healthy forests are important. Then we'll talk about why urban forests are important. We'll explore the types of forest policies and legislation that CCL supports, as well as how we will engage. And then we'll show you where you can find more information with additional questions in our FAQ on our advanced training. To take us through tonight's training, we're going to hear from CCL's research coordinator, Dana Nucitelli. So with that, thanks so much for joining us, and the floor is yours, Dana. Thanks, Brett. All right, let's talk about why healthy forests are an important climate solution. So to solve climate change, we need America's forests to pull carbon out of the air. Let's keep our forests healthy and growing. America's natural resources like forests, grasslands, and oceans are natural climate solutions that pull carbon out of the air, reducing the impacts of climate change. We can manage all these natural resources to maximize their climate change fighting impacts. America's forests are special places that are cherished by our communities, and they're hard at work pulling the equivalent of 12% of America's carbon pollution out of the air each year. By protecting, expanding, and managing our forests in a way that's climate smart, we can grow that number as high as 22% by 2030. We can increase the amount of carbon our forests pull out of the air by planting new forests in place it where, places where it makes sense. Young forests pull carbon out of the air at a very high rate as the young trees grow larger. And we need to protect the forests that we already have, which are disappearing. Climate change has made our forests more vulnerable to droughts, wildfires, and pests. Western forests are shrinking as a result, with up to 30% of California's Sierra Nevada forest land lost to other types of vegetation in the past decade. When forests die, they release the carbon they've been storing in the soil and trees into the air. We must protect them. Over half of America's forest land is privately owned. Today, landowners have limited incentives to manage their forests in a way that benefits our climate. We should provide financial incentives that encourage private landowners to preserve healthy forests and protect them from other uses. The world is currently losing 25 million acres of forests per year to deforestation. That rate has slowed from 40 million acres lost per year in the 1990s, but we still need to do much better. Most deforestation is occurring in tropical countries like Brazil and Indonesia, often converting the land to grow crops and livestock to sell on the international markets. We should prohibit the importation of products made of commodities produced on land undergoing illegal deforestation. Trees from forests can be sustainably harvested in a way that keeps carbon locked up inside the wood products instead of being released into the air. Homes and buildings made, up, made with wood release up to 30% fewer carbon emissions during construction than buildings made with concrete, steel, or plastic. We support policies that increase the use of durable wood products in construction. Americans are divided on many things, but we love our trees. 90% of Americans are supportive of more trees to absorb carbon emissions. Healthy forests are the place to start fostering bipartisan collaboration on climate solutions. So now let's talk about why urban forests are important. Trees save lives in cities, so let's make sure we plant them where they're needed the most. During hot weather, trees can reduce local temperatures by as much as 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 12,000 Americans die prematurely each year from heat-related causes. Planting trees is the most effective way to directly lower temperatures and save lives in cities. Due to historic discriminatory policies, trees are often more sparse in neighborhoods with low-income families and people of color. 
Today, these neighborhoods can experience temperatures more than 15 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than wealthier neighborhoods in the same city on a hot day. And the people who live in them are less likely to have air conditioning. Trees make outdoor and indoor spaces livable in cities, and they should be planted in neighborhoods that need them most. Urban trees help cities avoid catastrophic power failures during extreme heat waves by reducing air conditioning usage. A big power outage in conjunction with a heat wave in a major city could leave millions of people at risk of heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Trees reduce air conditioning uses and the corresponding strain on electric grids. Trees also make people who live near them healthier and happier. Spending time around trees reduces stress, lowers blood pressure, improves mood, and it helps us live longer. Everyone should have access to trees to be able to enjoy all those benefits. And every $1 million invested in urban forests creates about 24 full-time living wage jobs that can be made available to community members. So let's talk about the types of forest policies that CCL supports. CCL supports policies that preserve and expand forests. Uh, for example, by supporting reforestation, which is when we plant trees where they used to grow, or afforestation, which is where we plant trees in new locations. Uh, where it makes sense to do so. Uh, we also want to protect forests from wildfire and invasive species, restore forests quickly in a sustainable way after wildfires and other disturbances, and protect forests globally. We also want to promote climate smart forestry practices, incentivize the use of durable wood products, and help to increase urban forests focusing on, focusing on neighborhoods that suffer from a lack of tree equity. So let's talk about how we will engage on forest policy. On healthy forests, we will be engaging both locally and advocating for federal policies based on the criteria previously described. And we'll talk about some specific bills uh, in the next slides. Locally, we will support local groups and community leaders with tree planting initiatives, help communities take advantage of funding available for adding trees, and advocate for local policies that support urban forests, focusing on neighborhoods that suffer from a lack of tree equity. So let's look at the specific legislation that CCL is supporting. There's the Forest Act, which stands for the Fostering Overseas Rule of Law and Environmentally Sound Trade Act, which works to reduce illegal logging globally by restricting the sale of goods originating from illegally deforested land, and of course, there's the Growing Climate Solutions Act, which facilitates the participation of farmers, ranchers, and private forest landowners in voluntary environmental credit markets. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Brett, to wrap this up. Thanks so much, Dana. So in addition to this introductory training on healthy forests, we have an excellent, more advanced training, as well as an in-depth read written out FAQ. If you just go to advanced training on healthy forests or search for CCL community on that, you'll be able to find your answers to at least the commonly most asked questions, additional resources to support where you can ask your questions and more information and slides. So with that, we hope that you found today's training useful and empowering. If you are interested in making sure to get credit for attending, feel free to click that log your training button at the bottom of the training page. If you are listening from there, you can also go directly to the action tracker and then under chapter development actions, select training and type in the training name. And should you have any other questions after today, here is a link where you can find the training page and slides and where you can ask your questions about CCL's policy agenda on our forums on CCL community. Thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.